Okay, good morning. This is my first talk in English, so enjoy it. <laughs> uh, okay, my presentation is focused in uh, naturally enriched continental brines hosted. Thank you. Hosted in uh, closed basins in the hyper hyper arid uh, arid uh, region of the Altiplano Puna uh, High Plateau in South America. Uh, this is the preferred uh, lithium source for investors in South America as uh, uh, perspective for uh, cost, uh, logistical, and uh, uh, exploration. I mean, general costs are more favorable, yes. And in Argentina and, and Chile and Bolivia, we don't have uh, big enough pegmatite uh, deposits. Additionally, uh, some important products such as uh, potassium, boron, and sulfates can be mined, adding, uh, giving uh, the projects an added uh, value. Yes. This is just to acknowledge uh, the contributors. My lithium brine uh, team in SRK Consulting. They were the, the main contributors to this presentation. The former presenters uh, have talked a lot about uh, distribution of lithium brine deposits. So uh, the this, uh, slide uh, shows uh, the main lithium brine deposits in South America, where about 60% of the global resource is hosted in in uh, these closed uh, basins called uh, solars or salt lakes and about 65% uh, of the global lithium resource is uh, hosted in closed basins or solars in Chile and Argentina uh, Closed basins are maintained over long time, uh, time spans only if uh, evaporation highly exceeds uh, precipitation. Otherwise, uh, water, the water someday could overtop the, the water divide and would run away from the basin and it's, we don't have a closed basin anymore. Okay? Uh, this classification, geologic classification in major and in major solars, was developed by Houston, and is focused in solars located in the um, mainly in the Argentine Puna in northwest Argentina, where the northern Puna is a little bit wetter than the southern Puna. Wetter, I mean, uh, 150. Uh, 150 millimeters per year against uh, 80 millimeters per year in the southern Puna is actually very dry. Yes. In major solars are, char uh, are characterized by uh, um, evaporation, is uh, higher precipitation. Evaporation is still uh, higher than precipitation, but they are uh, the, the humidity regime regime. Sorry, it's higher than in major solars. In major solars, our uh, lithology is characterized by interbedded clastic, I mean detritic sediments, and evaporitic sediments such as halite or ulexite to the margins of, of, of the solars. Major cellars are mainly located in the southern Puna, in the drier Puna region. And lithology is characterized by a very thick halite core, yes. And uh, clastic or detritic sediments are found mainly to the margins of, of the of the cellar. Uh, 
main examples of uh, immature salars are the olarovska uchari salar is one uh, north south trending salar and the uh, east part of salinas grandes and examples of major salars are uh, the atacama is the the main producer of lithium from brines in the world the hombre muerto uh, salar the the western part is the, the second uh, producer of lithium from from brines and salar del rincon which is close to to be on production but yet very soon these are the main challenges we have to face when we are defining a brine a, a mineral resource from a brine resource yes the first challenge is uh, a brine resource is a dynamic resource it, it moves either naturally uh, or by pumping yes whether it's uh, whether affect lithium concentrations at, at least in, in surface because it's a very soluble resource yes so in for example in the wheat season uh, grace could become uh, somehow diluted yes by precipitation and dilution can be higher in wet years such as el nino events in south america so uh, weather is uh, a big issue in when we are dealing with uh, lithium resource in brines resource volume is another challenge because how to define the resource lateral limits they are, are they lithologic are they physical uh, is the the interface between fresh water, brackish water, brine, yes, it's difficult to say. Uh, how to link aquifer lithology with the brine grade, uh, the main challenge is depth. How to, sam to properly sample uh, brine to link a lithium gra uh, grade to a depth, yes. Uh, Another challenge is uh, the volume of the brine resource itself is effective porosity, specific yield, specific storage. And of course, uh, if we are talking about dilution by whether we, we must talk about dilution by natural recharge. Uh, this is uh, a hydrogeological and a hydrochemical view of uh, brine research classification for compliance with uh, international standards such as JORG or NI43101. The, the main difference with uh, uh, research classification uh, compared to classic hard rock mining is of course uh, we have to increase level on hydrogeological and hydrochemical knowledge and confidence, yes, to update research from infer through indicated up to measure resource. Um, these are yeah, very general steps uh, to to face uh, the early steps of uh, uh, of the exploration of uh, a brine resource, yes, Geologi geological mapping is uh, a very early step to define the main lithologic units of the basin, yes, uh, surface uh, sampling through uh, uh, shallow pits. It's uh, the first step of brine sampling uh, as uh, what uh, uh, brine table is very close to surface in, in cellars. Uh, pits are normally one or 1.5 meters, uh, meters depth. They can be hand dug. This is very difficult, believe me. And or uh, they can be dug uh, by a backhoe. Yes. It's, uh, geophysics, uh, surface geophysics, uh, 
uh, gravity, geoelectrics, uh, control source, uh, magnetotellurics, uh, to the to define the, the the sequence of the uh, sorry the thickness of the sedimentary sequence, diamond drilling uh, for coarse and brine sampling, yes, and uh, downhole down lithology uh, through uh, core logging and uh, geophysical profiling, uh, normally uh, geoelectrical profiling. Uh, neutron profiling is too expensive for <laughs> brain resources. Um, uh, a very important concept when uh, characterizing the uh, brain aquifer is specific yield. A specific yield is uh, is not uh, actually speci uh, effective porosity. It's a portion of effective porosity. When the the graphic on the left, yes, a uh, specific yield can be very similar over, uh, to sp uh, effective porosity in coarse grain sediments or in halite when uh, pores are are big, but uh, some sediments like uh, silt and clay can have a very high uh, effective porosity, but specific yield uh, is is low because of high specific retention. Specific yield is the portion of specific uh, of uh, effective porosity that can be pumped. Okay, this is what really matters. Yes, normally a specific yield is uh, measured in ex situ in by means of uh, lab tests such as relative brine risk capacity. It consists mainly in putting the core into a capsule or a recipient, rinsing uh, the core with brine. Yes, sample in the same cellar. We apply a, a vacuum uh, by means of, of a pump, and uh, the drained uh, liquid com uh, volume compared to the volume of the core is actually specific yield. Okay. Hydraulic conductivity, sp specific storage. If we're talking about uh, confined aquifers, and anisotropy are normally uh, measured or determined or estimated by field hydraulic testing or literature, yes. Uh, dispersivity is uh, a very important concept if uh, when we're talking about the solute, the solute transport uh, model because lithium, uh, because of, of its uh, very, very, very high solubility is normally transported by advection, yes. And dilution potential uh, because of uh, natural fresh water recharge, we can use classic hydrological modeling to to perform fresh water balance. Okay. At the advanced exploration stage, we should be able to accurately define the three. Uh, the great distribu distribution of lithium, potassium, magnesium, boron, sulfide, etc. Uh, the best method to perform, uh, to relate uh, a grade to depth, uh, to depth is uh, Packard test because we are obtaining two values at the same time. Packard tests are used to, to measure permeability of uh, uh, lithologic units and to sample brine from lithologic units. Yes, a double a double Packard test. Uh, of course, uh, quality assurance, assurance and quality <coughs> control program must be performed. Yes, it's vital of vital importance, such as every mining project. And a very important concept is chemical ratios. Uh, such as uh, magnesium over lithium, 
sulfate uh, over lithium because it determines uh, how much uh, money we do have to, to spend in slake lime or to separate, to properly separate magnesium from lithium. Yes. Uh, one, for example, a big resource with uh, good concentrations of lithium, let's say 400, 500 uh, milligrams per, per liter, but with very high magnesium concentrations can be could be, uh, become a high, uh, a big resource in zero reserve. Yes, uh, depending on the technology at the moment of uh, processing brine. At the end of the advanced exploration stage, uh, we put all together geology, geophysics, core lithology, and uh, hydraulic properties uh, assigned to lithologic units to define hydrostratigraphic uh, units, uh, brain chemistry, etc. We put all together to define a drainable uh, in situ geology uh, resource, uh, brain resource. Yes. Uh, drainable at this stage does not mean uh, that we can extract it uh, by pumping. We're going to say why. Okay, we have a resource, but do we have a reserve in a brain project? These are the main challenges we have to face when we are dealing with a uh, brine reserve, yes. Uh, water availability, yes. The pro project demand is conditioned by site hyper art conditions at the Puna Plateau. It can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing. Uh, it can be a bad, it could be good uh, because high evaporation rates enhance uh, lithium concentration by pre-concentration by evaporation ponds. Yes, it's good if we have high e evaporation rates. But on the other hand, it could be bad because we don't have, we could not have enough water for fresh water or uh, I mean processed water project demand. And water is a very valuable and vulnerable resource in the uh, Puna of Argentina. Brine recovery. What part of the of this resource can be actually uh, pumped? Yes. Spent brine handling. Uh, almost ninety, uh, more than ninety percent of the brine is barren brine. Once we have processed, what? Do we do with it? Yes. Uh, brain projects are, are good, so I'm, I'm talking about challenges. Uh, neighboring properties within the same cellar, we are talking about the fluid resource. Yes. Uh, what if we put a big, a powerful pump and and pump the brain of our neighbors? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> Yeah, great uh, variability uh, during pumping. Yes, uh, uh, once the pump is on, grades are gonna vary. Yes, and we have to assess it uh, during the life of mine. Dilution uh, beyond uh, nat natural ground uh, fresh water recharge. Uh, once the pump is on and during long-term pumping, yes, fresh water from the margins of the cellar are gonna start to get into the cellar and our brine and our, our resource is gonna be, uh, th there is a, a risk of dilution that must be assessed, okay? Uh, this is uh, our view for a brine uh, reserve uh, classification. What is important here? Only indicated and measured, measured reserves 
uh, must be taken into account when converting brain reserve, uh, brain reserves to brain reserve, uh, reserve. Yes. At this stage, we we should uh, we should have uh, a ground water and solid transport model to make long term. Uh, lower confidence predictions uh, when we're talking about probable reserve or short term but high confidence uh, predictions. Modifying factors are consideration of mining, pumping, in this case, processing, economics, marketing, legal, environmental, social, and governmental factors. It's, it's in, at this point, is similar to every uh, other hard work. Uh, project. Extractability is the main concept when we are defining a brine reserve. What part of the general reserves can be actually extracted by pumping? <coughs> Let, let's take a look at this example. Yes, this is uh, the reserves we have uh, uh, defined, for example, by Leapfrog. Yes, uh, the brine reserves. This, which is just a uh, hydraulic property, such as uh, st uh, specific storage or specific yield, when we're talking about un unconfined aquifer, multiply by the volume of the host aquifer. Okay, I want the whole resource. Yes, okay. Let's put two extraction wells in my resource. Uh, I want the whole resource, so let's put Two pumps. Yes. Uh, on the on the bottom of my resource. Okay. Uh, the time is. Okay. We have two main sources of loss here. Yes. A specific retention uh, retained in the uh, rock matrix, and of in the loss due to the minimum well drawdown. The reserve base is uh, strongly dependent on, on, on the in situ recovery factor. We have to define precisely an in situ recovery factor. Once we have defined an in situ, in situ recovery factors, we are able to uh, calibrate the numerical groundwater and solid transfer model, which is the main tool of, uh, for a brine mining project. Okay. Uh, the, the, the numerical model is also used to predict to predict uh, the pumping rate for a given uh, drawdown or vice versa. Yes, to predict uh, brine grade sustainability based on field brine grade uh, grade sustainability tests. And let's uh, gather the concepts we have so in this uh, very brief example. Uh, its example is based, is, is, is not very real, but it's based on uh, a pilot, real pilot tests, okay? Uh, measure plus indicator reserves were estimated in one million tons, approximately, of, of lithium. Pump, uh, a simulated pump, pumped brine was uh, 976 million cubic meters of brine. The, lithium, the initial lithium con concentration in the aquifer was 650 milligrams per liter. It means that we have pumped 643,000 tons of uh, lithium if, if we would have 100% recovery, yes. But lithium recovered in the plant would have been 232 thousand tons of lithium. It means that if we divide uh, recover in the plant by uh, ideally pumped lithium, we have just recovered 36 percent of the resource of, uh, of the pumped brine and 23 percent of the estimated measure plus indicated resource. Steel brine are good projects. Yeah? Uh, let's keep in mind uh, these key points, okay? Diamond drilling, uh, uh, brine mining is all about 
these uh, key points. Okay, diamond drilling exploration, where the expert is geologist. It's all about classic hydrogeology applied to hyper hypersaline uh, solutions. Right? It means variable density flow. Yes, brine reservoir assess reservoir assessment based on petrophysics, uh, for example, specific yield, and aquifer hydraulics. Continuous brine quality assessment because the grades are gonna vary uh, once the pump is on. The main extraction mining engineer is now the hydrogeologist. The main process engineer is the chemical geologist. The main planning, uh, mine planning tool is the ground water and solute transport numerical model. And it's all about dynamic model. It means that this uh, mine planning tool must be updated and at calibrated throughout the life of mine. Uh, many thanks. <laughs>